Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to His name. Let's just stand this this evening as we just uh, prepare for a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, for your love, and your compassion towards us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're grateful to be in this house of prayer, Lord God, to be able to exalt you and to lift you up together, Lord God, to glorify the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, as we prepare tonight, Lord God, to worship you, Lord God, and to lift you up tonight, Lord, we ask that your presence will come and meet us in this room, fill us with the anointing of your spirit, Father God, that we can move forward by faith, Lord God. Speak those things that are not as though they were. May the sick and the afflicted be healed tonight. May you set the captives free. Father God, we come here tonight to see you, not to see any man or any flesh. So Lord God, we ask that you have your way tonight. Lord God, anoint the singing, the specials, Lord, the testimonies, everything that goes forth may be for your glory. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul, well I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul, oh I've got Love like a river, I've got love like a river, I've got love like a river in my soul. I've got love like a river, I've got. Well, I've got love like a river in my soul. Oh, I've got joy, I've got. like a river on the inside of our soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, well, and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. Well, it was there. Tonight, we're going to prepare to take up a, a offering. 
Amen. See? 
Let's just uh, stand tonight as we grab our Bibles and prepare for the Word of God. I mean, he's weak. It's been good so far. God has been with you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, yeah, this, it's been a, for some of us, maybe it's been a trying week, uh, a hard week, but you know what? It's been a week with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, a week with God is, is the best thing you could ever have. Don't doesn't matter what you go through. Amen. As long as he's with you, he'll make everything all right. Amen. So we love the Lord tonight, and we come uh, just to exalt him and to lift him up. We want to remember to keep those in prayer who are unable to be here tonight. Amen. Um, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord with you here. And I believe that we're in a time where the elect are being called together, amen, around the word of God to feast on the word just in the hour when the Son of Man is returning, right? In that time when he's coming, the bride is feasting on the word and she's becoming more and more like the word, amen. The, the world has a, a terminology, you are what you eat, you know? And so the bride... You know, she can't be feasting on carnal things too much. You feast on those things, and then you become like the world. Amen. But we know that God is calling a bride without spot or wrinkle in this hour. Amen. And she won't be like the world. Amen. She won't fail like the first Eve failed. Amen. But she'll be thus saith the Lord. Amen. She'll be the very image of Christ. So we're believing God for that, and we know that we're saved by grace. None of us are perfected in the flesh. Amen. But we are pressing on to perfection. Amen. Until we come into that image of the stature of a perfect man. Amen. So tonight, we want to uh, turn with me, if you will, to uh, Amos chapter 3. And we want to begin at verse 7. And when you have it, let's just say amen. And if I could get a little bit more volume in this microphone. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. And I know that we uh, have some who will be watching on the live stream tonight. So we pray that the word would just bless them. Uh, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amen. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets the prophets. Amen. Let's go uh, one other place. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and uh, we'll read from verse 1 to verse 12. Genesis 1 verse 1 to verse 12. Amen. 
And it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, this is what God said now, he says, let there be light. Yes. And there was light. Amen. Because when God says something, he means what he says. And what he says must come to pass. Amen. And God saw the light. Amen. So he saw the manifestation of what he said and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Amen. So there's a distinction between light and and what's dark, amen. What's dark does not look like light, and what's light does not look like dark, amen. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Yes. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters, watch this, let it divide the waters from the waters. So that means just like there's a distinction between light and darkness, there's a distinction between living water, or oh, help us somebody, and just water, amen. So there's difference here. You'll catch the types in the spiritual. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So far, God is uh, two days. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered unto uh, one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So we see every time that God speaks something, every time that God says something, he means what he says, and what he says comes to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He goes on, uh, verse 8, and God, oh, I'm sorry, uh, verse 10, and God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth, watch closely, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Amen. So there was no grass. There was an earth at one time. It didn't have anything on it. No grass, no trees, no nothing. It was just dirt. Amen. And some water. But now God says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Amen. Amen. So the, the trees and the grass, it brought forth fruit. Amen. Amen. That, that fruit, you know, grass brings forth fruit. It's not the fruit you put in your mouth. Amen. But it, it's a seed that's come to full maturity. Amen. That's called fruit. When, the, when, the, when that seed, when the life inside of that seed comes to full maturity, that is called fruit. Amen. And verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's bow our heads one more time for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask tonight you take this word, Lord God, make it come to life inside of us. Lord, we ask that you speak, Lord God. May your spirit come and quicken us by the word of God tonight. May you have your way, Lord, quicken your people. Tonight we know it's a midweek service, but Lord God, we rebuke any weary spirits, Lord, any tired spirits that might try to come upon the people to hinder them from receiving their blessing. Lord, those who may be watching tonight, Lord God, we pray for them in their household. Lord God, that you'll be able to speak a word to us tonight. Lord God, that will bring forth life inside of us and manifest the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We ask and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. You can be seated. Amen. I, I like to um, use tonight for a title, the fruit of the word seed. Amen. The fruit of the word seed. Now, looking here. Everything made in the world 
has a genesis. Amen. Genesis means uh, the origin or the beginning. And the book of Genesis is considered the seed chapter of the Bible. Amen. Because the, the book of Genesis, it, it is telling us everything that happened in the beginning. And everything that we have today started in the book of Genesis. Everything you can look around in this room, and everything in this room came from the book of Genesis. Amen. It's because it had a beginning. It had an origin somewhere where it started. Amen. And, and maybe it went through a process to get to where it is today. Now, now, there are things that did not begin in the book of Genesis. Amen. Because it's been hybrid. Amen. So we know that there are some things that did not start in Genesis because it was hybrid. And anything that is a hybrid is no good because it cannot reproduce itself. Everything in the book of Genesis, when God spoke, he said, let every seed bring forth of its own kind. So anytime something cannot bring forth of itself, it, did, it was not created by God. It, it, it did not come from Genesis. Amen. So, you know, uh, you take, uh, say, a donkey and, and you breed it with a, with a horse and you get a mule. But the mule cannot breed itself back because it is not a part of the book of Genesis. God did not create a mule. Oh, help us, somebody. You won't find a mule in Genesis. You see, so even though we can look around this room and find that many of the things here was created in Genesis, there are some things that was not created in Genesis, meaning it did not come from God. Amen. And the hybrid food that we eat today. You think about all the food, the sugars, and all the stuff that they put in our food today. They make the food look bigger. Right, brother? Uh, Tommy, they make it look bigger. They make it look tastier. Make it look saucier. Amen. Cheesier. Oh, praise God. They make it look more vibrant. Amen. You know, they, they make, you, make you, when you just look at it, you get hungry. You want to eat it. Right? But it's no good for you because it's been what the world, we call it, it's been genetically modified. Yes. Right? And if you eat too much of that stuff, you know, after a while, the women won't be able to have babies. Amen. You know, it, it'll make men sterile because it, it wasn't there in Genesis. You see, and they've done something to it that they've changed the very genetic DNA of what it is. And even though it looks like a certain thing, it's not that. It might look like a horse. But it's not a horse. Might look like a donkey. But it's not a donkey. It's something else in between. You see, it might look like a cheeseburger. But it's an impossible burger. Amen. Praise God. Why? Because it's been hybrid. It's been changed. It's, it's not the original. And, and, and if you're not careful, the world will deceive you into thinking it's just as good as the original. All right, help us, somebody. They'll make you think that what you're eating, you know, even though it, it, it's not, uh, I, I, I'm not picking on our, our vegans and vegetarians, but they have this thing called tofu. Yeah. And, and to, tofu, they can do so many things to tofu and to vegetables. I heard somebody say to me that they can make a black bean burger taste like an Angus steak burger. Yeah. And I said, I don't, I don't care how many seasonings. And how much you mash the beans together, yeah. you, you cannot deceive me. Yeah. And in this hour, there's a spirit that's gone out yes. through hybridization that has tried to deceive the elect. Right. But the elect cannot be deceived. Right. We know the difference between a spiritual black bean burger right. and an Angus steak burger. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. Amen. So the prophet of God says this in 1962, the end time sign seed. He says, the church that will refuse to believe the word of God right. is a hybrid church. Amen. Yes. Help us now. Yes. He said, they're a hybrid church yes. with dogmas, creeds, doctrines. That's not scriptural. Right. That church cannot bring forth a spirit filled child because it's a hybrid. You see, when you eat too much hybrid, it makes you sterile. Yes. You can't produce life. And he says it's no good. It might be bigger, great big walls, yes. fine pews, big bells, plush seats, a uh, plush, plush seat. You know, we got nice plush seats here. Uh huh. He said, but that doesn't mean one thing. It's spiritually dead. 
right? It cannot bring forth spirit uh, filled children because it's dead itself. Yes, Whew. So a hybrid, a hybrid seed is already dead. There's nothing inside of it. It's empty. It's seedless. It's powerless. Amen. You'll get the types in just a moment. It doesn't have the said the Lord. Healing is not the uh, bread for, for the hybrid child. Amen. Healing is the children's bread. Amen. But it's not for the hybrid. Amen. They cannot receive the promises of God. He said a church that has refused to believe the word of God is a hybrid church. Listen to what the prophet says. He says, it will produce more church members, larger audiences, beautiful women, fine brethren, excellent musicians, big church buildings, community outreach, and charities. But that hybrid church will not be able to produce born-again believers. Wow. Amen. So they'll, what we see then is and we have to be careful of it because the true church knows what the word is supposed to taste like. All right. They know what the word is supposed to look like. Yeah. They have a, 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 a thing uh, with, with chicken nuggets now where they can take cauliflower, yeah. <laughs> amen, yeah. and they can make it, fry it in such a way yeah. that it looked like a chicken nugget. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Praise God. And, and they'll take this cauliflower and they'll fry it up and it can look like a chicken nugget, they say. And they say it tastes like chicken. And our church, I got to tell you tonight, I've ate a lot of chicken in my life. And there's only one food that tastes like chicken. And that's chicken. But I want to tell you, my son back there, he loves, little Zeke, he loves chicken nuggets. And you can take him to McDonald's. If you take him to McDonald's and get him chicken nuggets, and, you know, he doesn't like any sauce on the chicken. He likes to make sure it's what it is. And he'll get the chicken nugget, and he'll eat the McDonald's chicken. You can take him to Zaxby's and get him chicken nuggets, and he'll eat the Zaxby's chicken nugget. And you can take him to, uh, the, what's that, KFC, and get chicken nuggets, and he will eat the chicken nugget. Y'all with me tonight? You take him to Burger King and give him a chicken nugget, and he will eat the chicken nugget. But the other night we went to a restaurant. I won't say the name of the restaurant. We went to a little uh, Asian restaurant. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And they had some chicken nuggets on the buffet. And Zeke was uh, having a hard time throwing a fit. Amen. In the chair. He was hungry. So his mom got up, and she went. And she got him some chicken nuggets from off the little buffet. Yeah. And she brought it over to Zeke, and it looked like a chicken nugget. And it's the sign over the top of it. Oh, praise God. You're going to get the spiritual type in just a moment. It looked like a chicken nugget. The sign over the top of the church. I mean, the sign over the top of the food, it said chicken nugget. Praise God. <laughs> They said that they believe in holiness. I mean, they, they said they fried it. They, they, it said it was deep fried. They said that they believed in talking in tongues. I mean, they said that they put salt and pepper on it. Amen. They said that they believed the full gospel truth. I mean, they, they said that it was cooked to the right temperature. Amen. Praise God. But when Zeke put the chicken in his mouth, something didn't taste right. Something didn't feel right. So when Zeke bit into the chicken, he said, Mama, I can't eat this chicken. And she said, what's the matter? And she picked it up and she took a bite. And she looked at me. She said, it tastes like chicken. I picked up one. I took a bite. I said, it tastes like chicken. But when Zeke picked it up, oh, my. Zeke said, no, he threw it on the floor. He said, this is not the church of God. 
He said they don't believe in what they say they believe. He said the sign says church, but they're not the church of God. Amen. Praise God. The sign says chicken nugget, but it's, it's a hybrid product. Amen. It's been genetically modified. And even though it looked like chicken, even though it tastes like chicken, even though the sign says chicken, Zeke says it is not chicken. But it will be so close. Oh, help us somebody. That if it were possible. Oh, my glory be to God. Amen. You can't deceive the, the elect. Amen. The elect won't be deceived. Why? Because she's been feasting on the word. So you can't bring something in and substitute it. Amen. You've got to give her the original. Amen. You've got to give her that word because that's all she can eat. Amen. Praise God. Amen. See, the hybrid church, they, they fight and fuss and kick with holiness. Amen. You, you go in there and you say, oh, they say, oh, we believe in holiness, but the moment you start to talk about women wearing pants and sisters wearing makeup, all of a sudden they start to kick and, and, and fight against it. Why? Because it's a hybrid. It's something other than the original, right? They struggle with the mysteries of the seven seals. They struggle with the baptism in Jesus Christ. Why? Because they're hybrid. Amen. You see, so they, they refuse God's word and the prophet said, when the church refuses God's word, he says they are a hybrid church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, the prophet says in 1962, the reproach for the cause of the word, he says God has a time and a reason for that time to fulfill all his works. God knows just exactly what he's going to do. He, won't he, uh, we don't. We just have to receive it as he gives it to us. But he knows. And there's nothing going to go wrong with what he's planned to do. It all has to come about. There has to be sometimes rugged and hard things to only bring out the real true nature of the object. You know, rain is born in a jagged, ragged, lightning stroke, thundering skies. And if we didn't have rain, we wouldn't live. But you see what it takes to bring rain. Thunder. Amen. Lightning flashing, anger, and out of there comes rain. A seed must die, rot, corrupt, smell, and go back to the dust of the earth in order to bring forth new life. Wait a minute. So that means that I had to be a filthy, no good, dirty sinner where nobody want to sit beside me. They say you smell like a sinner. You look like a sinner. Amen. You come to church, you just look filthy. You look like you can't get it right. But praise God, that's the life that he wants. Because that seed has to die. It has to recognize how dirty and, and, and ugly it is. And it has to rot. And as it begins to rot, all of a sudden that, that sin nature begins to come off of that seed. Amen. And then the life can come out of that seed, but it's you that's dying. Amen. Your flesh. Your flesh is dying so that Christ can live. Amen. So in order for the church to bring forth life, the church has to die. Amen. The programs have to stop. Amen. The system's got to come to the end. The carnal spirit has to die out of that church. And when there's a dying out, there's a new birth that comes in. Amen. Let's go John 12, verse 24. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Yes. I'm sorry. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Yes. But if it die, yes. it bringeth forth much fruit. Yes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. So if you die, you don't have to be afraid of dying. Nope. You see, some people, they're afraid to sin. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of that. What you need to do is die in that process. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't come to life in your sin. Die in your sin. Glory. You see, when you sin, you should not glorify yourself, but you should feel guilty, yes. convicted, yes. saying, God, I need you to come down right now and pull me out of this uh, condition. Yes. And as you do that, his life can come out of you. Amen. Yes. I want to read this quote. The prophet says, a man can't join church or get all emotional worked up or anything else and become a Christian, it's got to be a solid birth of the spirit. Yes. Sincerely dying out, crying out, laying there till he's dead in Christ. Yes. Remember, life can only come out of death. Right. 
Amen. A grain of corn, if it abides, it abides alone. It'll never mean no more than that one grain of corn. Except the corn of wheat falling to the earth, it abides alone. But when it falls there, it rots, contaminates. And out of that, midst of corruption, comes the germ of life that gives it life and produces more. Watch. Except the church will be born again, die out to their creeds and theologies and so forth and be born anew of the spirit of God. It'll be an old, uh, cold, formal, ungodly, and different. Amen. That's right. That's old fashioned uh, sassafras preaching, but it'll save you, brother. That's right. It'll keep you when the storms are blowing hard. Get rooted and grounded. Get rooted and grounded. Amen. Because if you're not rooted in the right thing, you're going to die anyway. Amen. If you're rooted in sand, it'll just be a little sandstorm come through there and take you on out the way. Amen, right? If you're rooted on, on uh, a couple of stacks of hay, it might last for a little while, but you let a storm come in there and you're out of there. But if you're rooted in Christ, amen, on Christ the solid rock, I said if you're rooted in him, then you have something where you can be unshakable, unmovable, always abounding in the word of God. Amen. He says, get all the dirt scraped off of you before you pour, pour your concrete. Notice that's right. And the anchor rise down, uh, rise down good and tight. Oh, brother, what a day that we're living in, formal and different church age. He said, yes, sir, to the seven churches, send this message. Amen, amen. Why did he send this message? To help the church die. Amen. Why was the message of God sent? It was to bring a death to the church. Now, see, the church didn't want to die because they were in revival. Amen. In Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos, they were in revival. And all the way up to Laodicea, they were in a revival. But Laodicea, they were, they were in a revival that they didn't know was a death. Amen. Father God said they thought that they had something. Yes. They were they rich and increased with goods. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't need nobody to tell them nothing. Yeah. Amen. But the angel came and said, no, you're not. You're poor, yeah. miserable, wretched, naked. Don't know it. Yeah. That was the message that came to Laodicea. Yeah. The message to bring death. Yes. You said, I thought it was a message to bring life. It brings life after death. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But it had to come and it had to cut. What was it cutting? Cutting out the systems of man. Cutting out the ideas of man, the creeds and the systems. And now that that stuff has been cut out, the church is now quiet and dead. And what is she waiting on? Life. Amen. Amen. But not her own life. It's the life of Christ on the inside of the bride being made manifest in this hour. Amen. Because what was she? She was just a seed. Amen. The bride was just a seed. Amen. She was just a word. Amen. We know the prophet of God said that the word of God is a seed. And that bride, she was the word that was spoken. Amen. We believe that tonight, right? Let me go here. So why did he send the message? To help the church die out to itself. The word was sent out there and it cut and cut until it cut out an image for itself called the bride. Amen. And where did that bride come from? Let's find out tonight. Prophet of God says, what is the word? Now the word is eternal. It must not be tampered with, added to, or taken away from. See, must not be tampered with. God sees to that. It must not be added to, anything to it. Nothing can be taken from it because it's eternal. Now, to show you what I'm saying, it is in between these, Genesis to Revelation, it will not mix with anything else. Amen. All right, so that means the word of God, watch this, Brother Randolph. The word of God is not a hybrid. All right, come on. You can't take, oh my. Hey, come on. Now, you can take a horse and you can mix it with a donkey. But you can't take the word and mix it with nothing else. There is nothing that can mix with that. So the word can never produce a hybrid. Woo. So then where does the hybrid come from? All right, oh my. Yeah. Glory be. Because see, the word comes from God. Yeah. God don't make no halfway Christian. Right. 
he don't make no hybrid Christian. He don't make no genetically modified organism. Everything that God creates is an original. Amen. Amen. It's a classic. Amen. Praise God. So the, he says the word of God is pure. Nothing can mix with it. It's an original. It's not a hybrid. Yeah. The word of God then is an original seed. Amen, brother. That's right. So every time that God, yes. he speaks a word out of his mouth, yes. that's a seed that goes forth. Yes. And every time that seed brings forth life, watch this, it has to be good. Yes. That's why when we were reading in the book of Genesis, every time God looked at what he, came forth from what he said. God said, let there be light. There was light. And God looked upon the light and saw that it was what? Good. He never sees it bad because it's not a hybrid. He never sees death because it's not a hybrid. He never sees darkness in the, in the light because it's not hybrid. So when God created the earth, he looks at the earth because the earth was what? An original seed. And when he looked at the earth after he spoke the earth into existence, he, the Bible says he looked upon the earth and saw that it was good. Y'all with me this morning, this evening. Now watch this. He goes on and he creates the grass. Amen. And the herb yielding tree or the fruit yielding tree. And he looks upon it again and he says it was good. And when God created man, yeah. oh my, in his image, he creates Adam. God looks upon the creation that he made, and he said what? It was good. Oh my. Now, let's come full circle. So now he creates what's called a bride. A body unto himself. But when Adam and Eve were created, there was a little something that he gave to them called free moral agency. And Eve, through her free moral agency, she defiled her body, right. and she caused her husband yes. to defile his body. All right. All right. And all of a sudden, they lose their position, all right. right? They lose their authority, yes. but they were still yes. good. Right. Oh, my. Amen. Oh, my. You say, how is that possible? Amen. Praise God. You saying that they were good? Yes. Because before life could come out of them, they had to die. Oh, help us somebody. So it wasn't a mis it was not a mistake. Their fall was not a mistake. Their fall was according to plan. Oh, help us somebody. Otherwise, the bride of Christ could not have ever come forth. Are you with me tonight? So there, there had to be something inside of that seed. Yes, yes. There had to be something inside of Adam. Yes, yes, yes. It was you and I. Amen. Yes, yes. It, we were there. Amen. Yes, yes. In Adam. Yes. And we were the life. Yes. But in order for the life to come forth, Brother Randolph, yes. Adam had to die. All right. Come on. Glory be to God. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. So you see a seed, a seed can't stay a seed forever. Yes. At some point, that seed's got to die. <laughs> see that? See, Satan in the garden, he didn't have a revelation. He didn't know what was going on. He was simply fertilizing the seed. Oh, hallelujah. Did you get that tonight? He was simply fertilizing the seed. And when you put the fertilizer, you make it die faster. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Ain't God good? And that seed, now watch. That seed could not be mixed with anything. Yeah. You know that? No. That seed could not be mixed with anything. You said, well, Eve mixed with the serpent. Yes, but Eve did not have the seed. All right, come on, brother. <laughs> oh, my glory be to God. Eve did not have the seed. The seed was in Adam. Eve come out of Eve then was the life inside of the seed. Oh, my. <laughs> glory be to God. So Adam, you notice, Adam could not mix with the serpent. All right. No matter what sexual act, he could not produce a hybrid. All right. Come on. He could only produce originals. Yeah. Whoo, glory be to God. Right. So even though Eve fell, yes. God put enmity in between her seed, yes. Yes. oh, watch it now, and the serpent seed. Right. But Adam had a seed. Oh my. 
and inside of Adam was the Christ. Yes. Oh, glory be to God. You'll get these types in just a moment. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But Genesis 1, verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself and upon the earth, and it was so. Amen. So the word of God, seed, must yield fruit after its own kind. If you plant the word of God, seed, then you should expect to receive the word of God, fruit. Amen. Nothing else. If it's been tampered with, it won't produce anything. I said it won't produce anything. Not nothing. Nothing can come from it if you mix it. Amen. So when you see the denominations and they want to mix their man's idea with God's word, nothing can come from that. It will never produce spirit-filled children. Amen. It, it takes the original word of God, the original seed of God, to produce eternal life in the believer. Amen. The prophet of God said this. He said, do you get it? Amen. For God said, I will restore. He is going to restore it. How? By four death messengers. Yes. Pay attention. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because how is, how is God restoring the bride? If the seed has been killed, how is the life coming out? How is restoration happening? He says he is going to restore it. How? By four death messengers killed. Yes then four life messengers will restore it. What was the first? Martin Luther, yes. justification. What was the second? John Wesley, yes. by sanctification. What was the third? Pentecost, with the restoration of the gifts, the Holy Ghost, baptism of the Holy Ghost. What was the fourth? The Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Word, what? The Word? Yes. And I have in my notes here, Joel 2.25, he said, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent to you. Hey. Amen. I will restore the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, see the four deaf messengers, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. Then he says, the prophet goes on, he says, there were four great prophets. One of them, yes. Martin Luther, yes. he began to shine a light. Yes. There was a little light, just a very small strength of justification. Yes. Along came Wesley, stronger light, yes. sanctification. Yes. After Wesley come a stronger than him, yes. Pentecostal, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, another great prophet, see? But in the last days yes. of Malachi 4, yes. Elijah is come with the very word. The word of the Lord came to who? The prophet. Amen. Amen. So you can't go around it. Amen. And if you mix it with anything, That's it. it won't produce nothing. All right, man. It has to come through that prophet. Amen. Now watch. He says, in the evening light is to come forth to restore and bring back. Yes. Bring back what? Turn the hearts of the children right. back to the faith of the fathers. Oh, yes, that is the fourth light. So in this evening time, yes. we've received our fourth light. Right. But see, if that light don't shine on your church, it will not be able to produce a bride to go into the rapture. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. He goes on. He said, four killers took it. Four messengers destroyed it. Four messengers of death took it away in dogmas. Four messengers of righteousness restore it back again. Yes, Amen. Amen. He says, prophesy. We know this is in the book of Ezekiel 37, 3. Yes. Prophesy, son of man, can these bones live? Yes. Prophesy, can these bones live? Got the four stages of that coming forth of that church. Yes. What's the four stages of, of Ezekiel's dry bones coming forth? Yes. He said, but the life, yes. but the life only come, not when the sin whose skin was on them, but when the wind blowed upon them. So wait a minute. The life did not come upon the, those bones just because it had skin. Because just because it, it looks like it, it might look like the church, that don't mean it's the church. You can put skin on it. You can put a name on it. You can put whatever you want on it. But until the wind begins to blow, 
Amen. We're going to see what, what, that, what that church is all about when the wind begins to blow. Because then when that wind blows, it's either going to blow life or death. Amen. 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 So he says here, glory be to God. He says, uh, that's when the life come back in it, that fourth message of life. I will restore, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, the fourth light is to come that will bring forth the same signs. Justification brought back the pulp. Sanctification brought back the bark. Doctrine of holiness. What brought back the leaf? Pentecostal. Remember the Pentecostal leaves. Amen. What is it? Pentecostal leaves clap their hands. Joy, rejoicing. Pentecostal what? Uh, the fourth was the word itself. The word made flesh. Fruits of the proof of the resurrection sign that Christ has finally, after justification, being planted, sanctification being planted, baptism of the Holy Ghost, organizations died out, and Christ has again centered himself like the cap of that pyramid. Now watch. He says, first line, justification. Sanctification. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then coming of the cap, what is it? That Holy Ghost bunch being honed out so that it can fit with the same kind of ministry he had when he went away. So you notice, in every church age, they have the virtues. And as they come up to the top, I don't care if they have every single one of these virtues, if they don't go into the Holy Spirit, the capstone will not fit. It'll be too big. Amen. Amen. They have to come into the Holy Spirit. Because yeah. remember in the days, remember this, when Moses was in the wilderness, yeah. he, he called them out, yeah. brought them out of uh, Egypt. Yeah. They come out of all those systems of man, yeah. come out of all those ideologies. But just because they came out does not mean that they went into. All right. That's right, man. You see? Amen. So they've come out. Yes. But some people won't go in. All right, man. Amen. Oh, I'm going to help you with that tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God. He said, what are you saying, Brother Joe? The people who've come out, they've received the message. Yeah. But they have not received the message. Amen. Amen. What? That sounds like double talk. What you trying to say? Yes. There's some people, they've become religious in the message. Yes. They have become religious yes. in the message. Yes. They believe the prophet. Yes. They listen to the tapes. But it's a religion. Yes. Amen. Listening to tapes is a religion. Right. Believing the prophet has become a religion to them. Right. And they've left the Holy Spirit out. Yes. Amen. And without the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the word of God. Right. If you don't have the original seed, right. you are a hybrid church. Yes. Amen. That ain't me. I didn't say it. Yes. Amen. The prophet of God said it. Yeah. Amen. You're a hybrid church. What makes it a hybrid? A hybrid has a part of the original, but not the original. Ooh. Help us, somebody. It has a part of the original. It looks like the bride. It sounds like the bride. She dresses like the bride. She has the same prophet like the bride. But she is a hybrid if she rejects the Holy Ghost. All right, girl. Oh, help us, somebody. Amen. When they came out of uh, Egypt, they were in the wilderness, Brother Randolph. Yes. And they sent 12 spies. Yes. 12 men went over into uh, the promised land. Right. And they were to come back with a report. Yes. Yes. Amen. Can you believe that? 12 men. Hallelujah. Help us, somebody. Amen. We're going to find out who really believes. Amen. Amen. We're going to find out who the real church is in this hour. Amen. Amen. Because that church, she'll not only stay with the word, but she'll go into the manifested promise. Amen. I said it. She'll go into it. She won't just keep pointing back to the, to the tape. She'll become what the tape say. Right. Amen. Yeah. And so when they came back, they asked them. Yes. Now everybody has a chance to talk. Yes. Amen. You know, we live in an age, everybody feel like they got something to say. Yes. Amen. You can't hardly preach without somebody wanting to preach to the Come preacher. On. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. I see it all the time. You can put something on Facebook or post something on social media. Somebody always want to challenge something you say. All I posted was a quote or a scripture, and yet you're challenging the quote. I didn't even say anything. But they want to challenge it. Why? They got another spirit on them. It's a hybrid spirit. 
Amen, amen. That's why they can't produce anything. They're producing death. You say, how are they producing death? Because they refuse to accept the manifested promise. Amen. So the 12 spies, they come back. What happened? Yeah. Those 12 spies come back. They let everybody talk. So what's the report? How are we looking? When are we going in? When's the church going in the rapture? How are we going to make it? They said, oh. One of them said, oh. We're going to wait until the prophet rises up from the grave. Amen. Because we're not strong enough by ourselves. Come on, somebody, help me tonight. If you know where I'm at, you know where I'm at. Amen. Praise God. I like how the world said, if you know, then you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> Amen. They said, oh, we're going to just sit back and wait because the prophet is going to resurrect and, and ride this trail again. Well, another one came by and says, I know that I, 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 I know that some of these preachers sound like they're preaching revelation, but I ain't going to go with that revelation. I think I'm just going to stay right here in the wilderness with this revelation right here because I don't believe there's anything else to come after the prophet. You better be careful with that. The prophet himself told you that after uh, the prophet messenger goes off the scene, he said, I must decrease. Amen. So that the bride can increase. Amen. So when the prophet messenger goes off the scene, thus said the Lord is restored inside of the bride. Amen. Because if she is the life inside of the seed, she has to be able to produce what the seed is giving birth to. Amen. She's got a part to play too. So there's some... We got all these different spies saying different things, but nobody wanted to go in. But the Bible says there were two. All right. yeah. Amen. Prophet, Brother Branham said it like this. He said there were two million people in the wilderness, but only two believed. That's one in a million. Yes. Amen. Praise God. One for one million and one for the other million. One in a million. Yes. Right? Yes. Only one in a million believed. Yes. Amen. And can you think of it? church, we're talking about going in a rapture, and everybody thinks that they're going in. Hey, Amen. But Brother Branham made it clear it'll be so few that's going to go in that rapture. There's going to be people shouting and rejoicing in the pews when the rapture take place. They're going to still be right there in the pew shouting. Amen. But the elect of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. She is the fruit of that original seed. She knows who she is. She'll awaken in this hour, and she just she won't be a religious bride. She will be the manifested bride of that word. Amen. Amen. That's why we're rejoicing. Yes. Glory be to God. That's why we're shouting. Is because that spoken word that was spoken in Genesis has released the bride in this in this hour, in this day that we're in. Amen. So now. Jesus said, I and you, and you and me. So the bride, the word is in the bride, and the bride is that word. Let me say that again. The word is in the bride. It's not just in her, but she is that word. Hold on a minute. What did you just say, brother Joe? Let me repeat it slowly. Jesus said, I am in you, and you are in me. Therefore, Two have become one. Yes, yes. Amen. One. Yeah. One. Yes. We're not praying off to Jesus as if he's afar right. somewhere, but we realize he is who we are. Amen. Amen. Do you get that? Yeah. So every time you play the tape, we're not just playing the tape to give reverence to the prophet. Oh, we respect the prophet, and of course we respect the prophet. Yeah. Amen. Of course we believe the prophet. Yeah. But when you play that tape, you should hear your name. Yes. You should hear it talking about you. Yeah. The focus should be on the bride. Yes. Because the bride is now Christ. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? She has become who he is. In the Old Testament, three appeared before Abraham, and all three were Lord. They were one. Later on, Abraham comes before a priest by the name of Melchizedek. He was one. Christ. 
Melchizedek was the same person who was in the burning bush before Moses. It was not another, Brother Randolph. It was one. It was one. Always been one. When the angel of the Lord appeared before Gideon, it was one. When the angel of the Lord was with Elijah, it was one. It was not another. And when the prophet was preaching the word, the word that he was preaching out of his mouth was one. Help us, somebody. It's always been Christ. And in this hour, if we're not careful, we'll make it like Brother Branham has been preaching something different from who we are. But the entire time, he has been preaching the bride, the bride, the bride, one. Christ. Prophet says, the church ages, notice the harmony of the father and the son. Jesus never did anything until it was first showed him by the father. John 5, 19. The harmony is now to exist between the groom and the bride. Oh my. Did you catch that? So in, in the, uh, when Jesus walked the earth, he was in such perfect harmony with the father that he did nothing except the father showed him. But the prophet said in his last days, the harmony is now to exist between the groom and his bride. He shows her his word of life. She receives it. She never doubts it. Therefore, nothing can harm her, not even death. For if the seed be planted, the water will raise it up again. And here is the secret of this. The word is in the bride as it was in Mary. You want to hear a secret, Brother Tommy? The prophet tells you the secret right here. He says, here is the secret of this. It's the secret. Shh. <laughs> don't tell nobody cause if you go tell some people what I'm about to read here their mind gonna go crazy they gonna try to talk this quote away from you but the bride she's gonna hear the secret Amos 3 verse 7 surely the Lord will do nothing except he revealeth his secret to his servants the prophets here's the secret of this the word is in the bride as it was in Mary, the word has, or, or the bride, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did, did you catch that? <laughs> the word has the mind of Christ. I'm, I'm sorry, he said the bride. You'll catch the revelation in a minute. The bride has the mind of Christ, for she knows what he wants done with the word. Amen. Then the word is quickened by the spirit. And it comes to pass like a seed that is planted in water. It comes to full harvest serving its purpose. Those in the bride do only his will. No one can make them do otherwise. They have thus saith the Lord or they keep still. They know that it has to be God in them doing the works Fulfilling his own word. Yes. He did not complete. Wait, hold on. Yes. Hold on. You got to hear this next sentence. Yes. This is a part of the secret, Brother Randolph. On, he says here, he did not complete all his work while in his earthly ministry. All right. Come on. What? Yes. But the denominations say that Jesus we have to believe in the finished works of Christ. They said he already did all the work, so we're resting now. What did the prophet say? Yeah, but, but but there's nothing else. Brother Branham already, he already preached everything. There's nothing else. What did the prophet say? He did not complete all his work while in his earthly ministry. So now he works in. Yes, and through the bride. Glory, glory. Wait a minute. He works in and through the bride. Yes. How can he do something like that if we don't have a prophet anymore on the earth? It is because she has become Christ on two feet. She has the same mind as Christ, the same life as Christ, the same ministry as Christ. She is who he was. Oh, 
help of somebody. That's why you have to know who you're listening to. You have to know what voice you're listening to. Because there'll be some voices chirping your ear. Uh, probably religious voices who are listening just to the tapes. And they'll have you believing, oh, there's nothing else. All we're supposed to be doing is just listening to tapes and waiting for the rapture. That is a lie of the devil. Amen. I said that's a lie of the devil. That's a hybrid spirit. Amen. If you're going to say you believe this word, this gospel, you've got to stay with all of it. Amen. Not some of it, all of it. You've got to eat the entire book. Amen. Revelation chapter 10 verse 9. John said, I took the book and I began to eat it. And brother Tommy, when you eat this book, the Bible says it's bitter in your belly. Means that it's hard to digest. Oh, praise God. It's hard to digest. But if you digest this word, and it's going to be trouble. It's going to want to come back out. It's going to want to be regurgitated. But you got to keep it down. You got to keep it rooted and grounded, as the word of God says. Amen. And as you keep this inside of you, the prophet of God said, it'll come from your lips like sweet redemption. Amen. Praise God. It'll be in your mouth as sweet honey. Amen. Because now you know who you are. Now you understand the purpose of the message. Now you understand the purpose of the cross. Now you understand the purpose of the book of Genesis. Amen. Amen. He goes on here. I got to find a place to close. I appreciate you. But we got to cut it. He said, he works in and through the bride. She knows that for it was not yet time for him to do certain things that he must do now. But he will now fulfill through the bride that work which he left for this specific time. You know, I, I, I think I've heard it said like this. Some people say, oh, whenever I hear preachers say that there's uh, work still left to do, that's just them. They're, those are prideful brothers. They don't, they're not humble. They don't want to humble themselves to Brother Branham's ministry. They don't want to humble themselves to the message of the hour. No, I, I am humbling myself to the message. The problem is, is that some eagles who are in that little chicken coop down there, we heard the message, and we're not satisfied anymore with plucking bird seed, chicken seed. You know how small chicken seed is? It's so, it's so tiny, and the eagle's beak is so big. And unfortunately, we got some, cover your ears, Brother Randolph. Cover your ears, this ain't gonna, this ain't gonna make good for the tape. We got some grown babies still eating chicken seeds off the ground. Uh, I just only want to hear the tape. I only want to hear the tape still plucking on the ground. There's nothing wrong with playing the tape. You need to listen to the tape. But at some point, you need to spread your wings. You need to start running, get some exercise, and start flapping so you can get out of that chicken coop. Because if you stay in the chicken coop, Brother Randolph, yes, you will die. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Help us now. Amen. Come on, Brother Tommy. Amen. Amen. At some time, you got to start saying, I can't, I can't make the same sounds as those chickens. <laughs> the chickens, they run crazy. They flap all around. They run, yeah, they fall all over the floor, <laughs> do all that. At some point, you got to say, hey. Time for me to start flying. Yes. Time for me to start seeing what these wings are about. Boy. It's like, oh, those believers who are using their wings, they not humble. No, I'm humble. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up in that first resurrection. If you think I'm strange, don't wait for me to change. I'm going up with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. When you get the right revelation, you'll realize that the meeting in the sky is just you taking off. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everybody's sitting back waiting on Jesus. He's a, why, why is everybody looking in the sky waiting on Jesus to come when he's supposed to be in you? He's supposed to be in you. That's the meeting in the air. Is Christ in you the hope of glory? Amen. You have that, then you have the meeting in the air. Yeah. But without that, you're looking for something else. There's only one. Oh, I'm going to leave that alone tonight. <laughs> amen, amen. Goodness gracious. The prophet says, 
in the church ages. He says, Jesus overcame by the word. Yes. And right now, let me say that this is the only way to be an overcomer. Also, it is the only way that you can know if you are overcoming because that word can't fail. In another place, he said, now faith is a conqueror. Faith is an overcomer. It just isn't a peacemaker. It overcomes. He says, uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. What does it do? What is faith? What, what is to conquer? Conquer and victory is the same. You hear that, Brother Randolph? Conquer and victory is one. To conquer means to beat down, to override, to handcuff, to throw it into prison. It means that the sin that once ruled you, you now rule it. It means that you have overcome it. You whipped it. You're greater than it is. Oh, I feel religious right now. Which was first, a sinner or a savior? A savior. For a savior is more powerful than a sin. Oh, my brother Tommy, which one came first, the healer or the sickness? The healer had to be there first because the healer is greater than the sickness. Amen. Which one came first? Amen. The Holy Ghost or the backslider? Praise God, the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is what's going to go after the backslider. Amen. Amen. We got to recognize who we are. Amen. 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 Everywhere you see sin in your life, just remember, wherever there's sin, there was a Savior first somewhere. Amen. There was a God first somewhere. You were there first in eternity somewhere. So when you see your sin, don't allow it to rule you. Yeah. Say, sin, I see you, but guess what? I'm first. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was first. Amen. And if I was first, that means my father was first. So that means that you can't rule me because I rule you. Amen, 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 amen. Glory be to God. He said, which was first, the healer or the sickness? It, it, it couldn't be a healer unless it was over the sickness. It is a healer. It could conquer the sickness. And faith is the victory that overcomes every curse of the devil. Faith is the victory. How many believe that tonight? Faith is the victory. Amen, amen. You say, well, what were we speaking on tonight? The fruit of the word seed. What is the fruit? What is the seed? Let's ask you that first. The seed is the word. Amen. We're not having all this good preaching, good word, just so that we can say we went to church. Amen. If I gave, went over to Sister Bobby's house and Sister Bobby, she said, oh, Brother Joe, I really, I really like watermelons. I, 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 I love some watermelons. And I give her some watermelon seeds. If she just hold the watermelon seeds in her hand and look at it, what's that going to do? Can she eat a watermelon? No. She'll never eat a watermelon holding it in her hand. She'll never eat a watermelon and say, well, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep playing this and listening to it over and over again. At some point, you got to commit that watermelon to the ground. Amen. Amen. No watermelon seeds. And when that seed gets committed to the ground, what begins to happen? It's got to die. And as it begins to die, you know what Sister Bobby has to make sure she does? While, while the watermelon seeds in the ground, she got to make sure the water can get to it. She got to make sure the Holy Ghost can get to it. Because if you don't get the Holy Ghost to it, it won't produce life. It'll never make it into the rapture. It'll never break surface. So she has to make sure the water continues to get to it. And Brother Tommy, after a while, you might just see a leaf at first. You know, some people see a leaf and they say, uh, I've been coming to church all my life and, you know, I'm still struggling with this one thing. Yeah, but you overcame something else. You're talking about what you're struggling with now, but what have you overcome? Has there been any leaves or any branches grow off of anybody? Amen. Just because you don't have the full fruit yet doesn't mean it's not coming. All right. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Just because you can't see the full fruit of it yet don't mean it's not coming. Amen. So instead of worrying about what, when the fruit is going to get there, you should be thanking God that a twig came out the ground, that a bark came out the ground, that a branch is beginning to grow, that a leaf is beginning to grow. And after a while of rejoicing in the S-O-N, amen, <laughs> after you rejoice in the S-O-N long enough, eventually what will happen? The fruit. But it's got to be an original seed. It's got to be the original seed. Without the original seed, It'll die. It'll die. Let's stand to our feet tonight. 
Amen. It is grace. It is grace. It's grace to serve the Lord. Oh, it's grace. It's grace. It's grace to serve the Lord. Isn't it grace? It is grace to serve the Lord. Isn't it grace? It is grace to serve the Lord. Oh, it is grace. It is grace. Oh, it is grace to serve the Lord. It is grace. Oh, it is grace. It is grace to serve the Lord. It is grace. It is grace to serve the Lord. It is grace. It is grace to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You know, I know who the rapture is tonight. The rapture is me. Amen. Everybody's looking for the rapture. I'm right here. Amen. Praise God. I'm the rapture. You say, well, how do I get in the rapture? Amen. You've got to eat my fruit. Amen. Praise God. The prophet of God said that in the end time, you see, when you make statements like that, sometimes people get a little mixed up. They said, did you just say I have to eat your fruit to go in the rapture? That's what I said. Amen. You have to eat my fruit to go into the rapture. Amen. You eat of any other tree, you're going to die. You say, well, I don't, I don't understand that. You point me to you, Brother Joe. No, I'm pointing you to the bride. The prophet of God said, the bride will be the final voice in the final age. And he said, she will no longer be the mouthpiece of God. He said, but she will be her own mouthpiece. And he said, in the end time, the world is going to hear directly from God one last time. Brother Randolph, if the world is going to hear from God one last time, who is it going to be listening to? <laughs> you can listen to tapes all you want, but if you're going to go up, you got to be here in the bride. And remember when John in the book of Revelation, when God took him into, in, into the spirit on the Lord's day and he began to look into that vision, John saw a preview of the bride. You remember he saw the 144 elders. Well, he was one of them. Yeah, amen. amen. Yes, so John had saw himself when he looked over yonder. John looking at himself. Can you imagine that, Brother Randolph? He was looking in a mirror. Oh, my. Come on now. So when people say that they're looking for the rapture, looking for the rapture, if you want to look for the rapture, when you get home, I'm going to show you how to find it. Go look in your bathroom. <laughs> Amen. Go in your bathroom tonight. Next time you say, I'm looking for the rapture, just go in your bathroom and look in the mirror. And if you don't see the rapture, just stay there for a little while till God reveal it to you. Amen. Praise God. You're the rapture, Brother Tommy. There ain't no devil can stop you from going up. Can't no sin stop you from going up. You are the rapture. As a matter of fact, there is no rapture without you, my brother. <laughs> Amen. I don't care what happens. It can't happen without me. Amen. Praise God. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Amen. We want to remember those who weren't able to make it tonight. Amen. But what a time we had tonight. Amen. Praise Amen. God. The fruit of the word seed. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the word. Lord God, you just speaking, Lord. It's, it's not about me or anything like that. We're not pointing anybody to any men, nothing like that. But Lord, we're pointing to Christ and Christ crucified. For we know if it wasn't for the death of Christ, there could be no life that could come out of him. It was a blood life that was inside of him. And God, we were in that blood life. That's why Satan can't cross the bloodline. He can't get to us. He can't touch us. The proper God said that death can't even stop the bride. Amen, because we are who he is. We are who you are, Lord. We are Christ in flesh. We are Christ, the mystery of God revealed in this hour. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for this message in this end time to open our eyes, to show us who we are, to awaken us in this hour. Lord God, calling us to the stature of a perfect man. Not that we're being, uh, not that we are perfect by any means, Lord God, in this flesh, but your grace has made us perfect in your sight. For when you look at us, you look at us through the blood. And when you see us, you see us white as snow. 
God, we thank you for that tonight. And we pray for every person here tonight as we prepare to depart from this place, but not from your presence. Go with each and every believer. Lord God, touch each and every person, every heart. Meet the needs of your people. May their faith come alive to speak those things that are not as though they were. And believe with all their heart and don't doubt. Lord God, help us. Help us tonight. We ask and we pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.